Welcome to Solid Edging Inventor Pro HSM. Today I'm going to discuss some tips and tricks for doing a 2D chamfer mill toolpath. So let us begin. Uh, before I actually get started on the toolpath itself, there's a few new things inside of HSM that will be of interest to you. And one of them is setting the origin for your part. So let's go in here and get a new setup. I'm going to pick this corner because this is a part that gets flipped over in the vise. Now, rather than going through all of the work coordinate system, model orientation, stock box, point, blah, blah, pick and all that stuff, just pick your point. And if you'll notice, each one of these axes on the origin, the arrow is divided into two segments now. So if we want to align the z-axis correctly, we will pick the base of the arrow, and then we will pick a line that we want it to be parallel to, and it will align itself. Then, of course, picking the end will flip the axis, and the same is true for the x and the y. So assigning your x, y, z origin has now become a lot easier. And on this particular part, I don't have any extra stock, so no additional stock. And OK. This part was a problem for me a while back because I could not pick the line segments that I wanted to recognize in 2D chamfer or in 2D contour. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. Now, before we go any farther, there's another thing to mention. You cannot use the 2D chamfer toolpath as of yet on parts that are modeled with chamfers on it. So if you want to model your part exactly like it's going to be in real life, which is what I always prefer to do, then if you want to use the 2D chamfer toolpath, you have to remove all of the, the chamfers, or you have to go ahead and use the 2D contour. Uh, my understanding is, is that they're working on this, but like some other things, the fix seems to be sometime in a very nebulous future. So for all practical purposes, most of the time, uh, the 2D chamfer is, toolpath is not of use unless you're working with the raw edge. In any case, let's go to the correct way and the easy way to do a part modeled with chamfers on it. And we'll do the contour. I've already got my tool in the library. Now this is the problem that I ran into, and this is what was such a difficult thing to figure out. I want just this line, this line, and this line. How do you do that? Well, you pick on this. Now it's going to pick the bottom of the part. If you click on it again, there's a prompt that pops open, and you want the open profile. And that works fine for now. But let's continue on and see where we end up. Ah, it's going to pick other stuff. And this is where the nightmare started on this part. There was no easy way to make all these extraneous, unrelated lines go away. What finally turned out to be the tip that was worthwhile, and let me get rid of all these selections because they're, they're totally invalid, was there are two things you can do. And the best thing is to use this method to select your lines. So we'll go back in here to 2D Contour. Pretend like you're mill cutting. Press the Alt key and keep it depressed. Now you see how I'm picking these lines. It's just like I were climb milling. Pick the beginning of each segment. And it picks them in the right order, and it picks them on the right side of the part. I can continue around this part now. And we'll pick the rest of the ones that I want to chamfer in this operation. No must, no fuss. 
does exactly what I want it to do. This, by the way, if you want to use the 2D chamfer tool path, will also work on edge selection for that. But once again, it only works on raw edge. You can't use it on a modeled part, a fully modeled part. Okay. Now, on this part also, I want to extend the cut so that it comes in from the outside of the part on a straight segment before we go ahead and actually start cutting. So I want the horizontal lead-in radius. We'll just pick a point two. And I want the lead-in sweep angle to be zero degrees because I want it to be a straight line segment. And the linear feed-in distance because I want it to be clear of the part in every aspect for sure. We're also going to assign point two there. Now we'll hit OK. So I have a lead in that will not conflict with any part of this. And this is the singular best way to select the profiles for the use in a 2D contour or a 2D chamfer tool path. There's also another little thing here. How do you know you're actually cutting on that? Well, let's go to simulate. Make sure that you have your tool shown as transparent. And then there's a little bit of magic that will happen here. If you will notice, there is a little white line or a little different colored line that shows up in the middle of your tool as it goes across the chamfer face and it's showing the full width of the chamfer face. What you're actually seeing is, is what this tool will cut. So you can verify that it's actually going ahead and cutting the width of that chamfer without looking at a view on end to see if it's going all the way down to the chamfer or running a full simulation with all the tool pads. And where this is particularly beneficial is if you have a number of tool paths, but you only want to verify the chamfer tool path, it's hard to get in there and see it actually cutting without it gouging into the stock and doing all the rest of that nonsense. So if you want to go ahead and just verify the tool path, this is the way to simulate it and make sure that what you've got is cutting the correct width. If for some reason you want to remove a particular line, pressing control and keeping it down, left key mouse click removes it. However, since I don't want that permanently gone, we're going to reselect it. Basically, those are the secrets to doing a 2D chamfer tool path. And uh, if you've been struggling with trying to figure out how to pick the line segments, this will set you straight on that exact issue. Now there's also another thing I wanted to show you. How do you figure out which one of these that you're actually working on, which setup? Well, if you get five or six in a row, sometimes you go up there and you click on the setup and you go over there and you start working on your tool path and then realize you, you didn't create a new tool path in that setup. Where you actually created it was in the setup that's checked. So in order to correct that problem, what you want to do is, is go in there and right click on the setup, make it your default folder. Now when you select a tool path, as long as that one is the default folder, your tool paths will be assigned to that setup. In any case, those are some tips and tricks for today, and I hope you enjoyed the video.